the book opens that he's been away in prison, mm. and we don't know for what ghastly, ghastly mm. crime. Um, for Did while. the crime surprise you? Uh, no, actually, because the I don't think it gives too much away to you. No. Because um, the first thing his father does is packs him on the car and takes him to yeah, yeah. the ruins of of the church that he burned down, <laughs> and says, you know, it's like this will be your, mm. you know. What really interests me is different people's reaction to that because some people go, you know, it's not that bad. I mean, for goodness sake. And then other people go, he burnt a church down. You know, as if. And even now, I just I find that fascinating. That sort of some incredible strength of opinion about it to do a thing like that. I'm kind of a yeah, a church. So you know, a bit of arson. No one was in there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, <laughs> now the library that yeah. would have been a crime. But yeah, you know, exactly, exactly. So there are really two families. Mm. There's there's Gilbert Lewis, Alice, Alice, and then there are the the Carmichaels. Yeah. Tell me about them. Well, they are. Um, sort of the head family of the, of the village and Dickie is um, the alpha male and they I think what I wanted with them was really the the normality of, of violence and um, cruelty I don't think they're unusual or particularly extreme you know Dickie's abusive and one daughter gets it the wife used to get it and, you know. I love writing Tamsin I love writing the I loved writing the popular blonde, the Grace Kelly blonde, and seeing what's behind a girl like that, because I think those girls are often very damaged and ruthless, and don't come from anything happy and functioning, and I really li I liked doing that. Yeah, she's, she's, um, creepy is the only she word. She is. Because she just seems so, she's the perfect, yeah. perfect woman, and, and everybody's attracted to her, Lewis included. But um, she almost likes just to, to like to lure people in, and, and I didn't and want to demonize her for that because there's no. that very sort of the stereotypical kind of tease luring people in, and I just there are so many girls like that. But I wanted to, um, you know, it's a, it's a self defense thing for her. It's a defense mechanism. I, I saw her like a, a prison guard mm -hmm. that she just has to toe the line and get on with it because uh, you know she, she couldn't afford to look down and, and also I think if she has everybody liking her then that's one less person who's going to beat her like her exactly. father does exactly because she I mean she's and she never knows when because he's Dicky is so and if you're lucky enough to be friends with the head warder then you know stay friends with she's she just is very carefully preserving herself mm-hmm and then there's Kit lovely Kit I, I like Kit. I, I like Kit her. a great deal. Well, she's she's really heroic, I think, and she has this um, um, absolutely conscious, deliberate levity about her. Uh, she's just getting on with it until she can leave, and I really admire that. Yeah, she's. Uh, I mean, there isn't quite a calendar on the wall with her marking. No, but, <laughs> but practically. But yeah, and she has such self belief that she just has decided to. I really admire her. She d she's decided n not to, and you know, Lewis implodes and she makes this conscious decision not to, not to blame herself and not to punish herself. And it's not, um, it's not just luck, it's she really thinks about it. She's the only person who really knows themselves. Yeah, she is, isn't she? Yeah. And, and I think the only one who's really going to be in good shape, except maybe Lewis at the end. He'll be okay. Um, to handle what's coming. Yeah, because you just know that everybody in that village is just going to hate the '60s <laughs> so much because you know I, I just know that they're going to this permissiveness yeah, they are. will just, they, you know, just they completely will drive them absolutely bad. I mean, jazz clubs already are yeah. just you know how just can the that rot possibly? setting in exactly? Yeah. No, he'll be fine. Yeah, rock and roll. He'll will finally just be able to see something he can recognize, mm -hmm. yeah. and also the anger. All that anger that then came against what had gone before. Yeah. He'll, he'll, he'll be all right. It's funny because this whole book basically is upside down. Did you, was that a deliberate, I'm going yes. to do this and. Yes. And, and because have my I evil think so, so often, um, you know, the urge to scapegoat that herds have is, is, you know, so often just completely this kind of erroneous blaming of people. There couldn't be anyone more blameless than a little boy who tried to save his mother from drowning. Mm -hmm. And I just really wanted to 
kind of tell that, I think, what's quite honest about the way we, we react to grief and to damage and to wounds, that, that we, you know, are revolted by them. You know, you probably would have hated this era. To live in? To live in. Yes, I should think so. It would have been just awful. Yeah, no, I never, like I don't you. have any illusions about it. I yeah. would have hated it. Because I, I just think you're just like, well, you're Kit. <laughs> to um, me. I'm, well, um, no, I'm cer well, I'm certainly not a sort of group, group joining in person. So, I, you know, that homogeny I would have had problems with. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, because I just see you maybe sneaking off to a jazz club once in a while. Oh, and definitely. That would have been, yeah. you know. Fools and fags, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, good job. Well Thank done. you. Thank you very much. The book is The Outcast. I've been speaking with first-time novelist Sadie Jones and The Outcast, published by Canada.